Hi, my name is Simon and I'm a Solutions Architect here at AWS. Customers ask me sometimes what the value is for having access to the Shield response team through their Shield advanced subscriptions. Shield is AWS's DDoS protection service and while all customer workloads are automatically protected against infrastructure attacks by Shield standard, subscribing to Shield Advanced provides expanded DDoS protection for your resources as well as 24-7 access to the Shield response team or SRT as they are known. There are many advantages of having a Shield Advanced subscription and I've listed a few of them here for you. However, it's access to the Shield response team that is the subject of this video. Uh, where we will explore how customers with Shield Advanced subscriptions can engage with the Shield Response Team or SRT, as well as the benefits the team can offer customers before, during, and after a DDoS event. The team itself consists of security engineers who specialize in DDoS event response, and these specialists are spread over multiple geographical regions to provide 24-7, 365 coverage. Customers can leverage the SRT's availability and expertise by including them in the internal event response workflows. And before a DDoS event, customers can preemptively engage with the SRT to review DDoS architecture, conduct operational readiness inquiries for IEM events, and to help with custom mitigation templates for elastic IPs. Now, there are several ways to initiate engagement with the SRT when a DDoS event is underway. Customers can create a support ticket with AWS Premium Support using the highest severity available to either business or enterprise support level subscriptions. Premium Support will then escalate the ticket to the SRT for further investigation and mitigation. Note that Premium Support Response SLAs apply here. For quicker response times, customers can initiate an engagement with the SRT using the Shield Engagement Lambda. And this Lambda can be configured ahead of time to include details specific to a given customer, such as a preferred contact list or bridge ID. This method will escalate the case directly to the SRT, bypassing premium support and accelerating the engagement time. Customers also now have the ability to configure proactive engagement where the SRT will initiate contact with the customer's pre-listed contacts when health checks indicate that the customer's application is unhealthy during a detected event. The proactive engagement is a fantastic value add, and it's not uncommon for the SRT to reach out to the customer before they themselves have gotten a handle on the event, and this greatly reduces response times. During an event, the SRT can really help customers identify and then mitigate an attack in as short a time as possible. They can do this by immediately helping customers identify the attack signature from customer WAF logs, as well as from internal AWS tooling. Attacks will typically have a signature that once identifies allows for accurate mitigations to be applied that will block the attack traffic, but will allow the legitimate traffic through. To optimize engagements and accelerate mitigations, customers can provide SRT access to their WAF logs in advance of a DDoS event. During an event, the team will work with the customer to check volumetric data, so checking for spikes of data coming in. They also use statistical analysis comparing historical usage patterns with current patterns. All these actions help them identify source IPs and attack signatures, which can then be used in mitigation actions. They can help customers author their own WAF rules based on the attack signatures, as well as also adding custom mitigation on AWS Edge equipment that can drop the attack traffic as far from the customer resources as possible. The SRT can also use BGP traffic engineering to alter the way traffic enters our network, allowing the impact of a DDoS event to be diluted over multiple ingress points. The SRT is also more than just a reactive team and correlates DDoS event data for threat research purposes. Based on this collective data, they continually publish best practice guides in the AWS Security Blog. To view these articles, you can search the AWS Security Blog with the tag AWS Threat Research Team. Additionally, they also author protection guides, architectural best practice white papers, and an annual threat landscape report. These publications are available to all customers. I'd like to finish off by giving two quick examples of how the SRT has helped customers mitigate attacks in the past. The first example is how they helped a customer with a layer seven mitigation using WAF. And the second is how they helped another customer with a layer four attack with edge mitigation. 
In the first example, we had a customer who was protecting an API with Shield Advance, which started receiving several times the expected load of traffic. And in this case, the attack was very well distributed. So even the applied rate-based rule, which had a minimum setting of 100 requests in a five minute window was not blocking all the attack traffic. And by well distributed, I mean that there was a lot of source IPs sending attack traffic. However, the amount of requests from some of the source IPs was actually below the minimum threshold in that rule. While the rate based rule was effective in mitigating the bulk of the attack traffic, because there were some IPs sending requests at rates lower than the defined threshold, the application's performance was still being affected. The customer then reached out to the SRT who did a WAF log analysis. And what they found was a lot of the source IPs were coming from well-known hosting providers. Because of the nature of the application, legitimate clients were individuals. And so traffic from hosting providers was outside of the expected profile. The SRT engaged with the customer and pointed them towards an Amazon managed rule or AMR for well-known hosted provider IPs. Initially, the rule was added in count mode and they were able to confirm a massive spike in requests hitting that rule. And after confirming that this rule was matching the attack traffic, they then toggled the rule from count mode to block mode and the attack was immediately mitigated. The second example was for a gaming customer who was experiencing a layer four attack against their architecture. The customer was receiving large but very short bursts of traffic across the elastic IPs associated with their gaming servers. The SRT was able to check internal tooling and identify that most of the attack traffic was UDP packets on the legitimate gaming ports, while to a lesser degree there were also TCP packets being received. For the UDP packets, they were able to confirm that the source port on all the attack traffic was the same, which was a well-known UDP-based VPN service. Uh, they were also able to pick up that the attacking TCP load had both the SYN and the ACK flag set. Those internet-based services were then responding to those packets and directing those responses to the spoof source IP, which were the elastic IPs attached to our customers' resources. Shield standard was protecting the resources from falling over. However, the application was still impacted due to the brief sharp spikes of traffic being sent to the customer servers continually. The SRT worked with the customer to confirm the expected traffic profile so that they could put mitigations in place at the border of the AWS network. As the application servers were not expected to generate any outbound TCP connections, there would be no SYN packets being sent out from those elastic IPs, which as you know, is the first packet of the three-way handshake. And consequently, there should be no TCP SYN ACK packets returning to those servers, which is the second packet in the three-way handshake. So based on these reflection signatures, the mitigation at the border included blocking all inbound TCP packets with the SYN and ACK flag raised, as well as blocking any UDP packets with the source port identified in the investigation. Once this mitigation was applied, all the attack traffic dropped at our border and consequently the customer's application was stabilized. I hope that this video has provided you some insights into the value of the Shield Response team and how they can help you during a DDoS event. Thank you.